I now look to Professor Raj Mohan Gandhi to continue the case for the proposition. Uh, Madam President, honorable members, as I commend this motion to the House, this motion so wonderfully presented by my predecessor here, let me start by recalling that in the partition that I hope we will agree to regret, Great Britain played a role. In March 1945, four months before he would lose office, Prime Minister Winston Churchill instructed Archibald Wavell, India's Viceroy at the time, to ensure that India was divided into, quote, Hindustan, Pakistan, Princestan, etc. Four months later, in August 1945, Vallabhai Patel of Gujarat, who fought the British alongside Gandhi and Nehru, said in Bombay, quote, the British talk of Hindu-Muslim quarrels, but who has thrust this burden on their shoulders? Give me just a week's rule over Britain. I will create such disagreements that England, Wales, and Scotland will fight one another forever. <laughs> now, I'm tempted to wonder this evening, is there an ulterior design here? This house rejects the regret of partition notion. This house celebrates the partition of India and therefore desires the breakup of the UK and of Europe. In supporting the motion, I express sorrow at partition's pain and dismay at partition's brutal cost, but I do not desire the undoing of partition. For centuries, Indian rules had imposed a total ban on the mingling of castes, but human nature being human nature, including in India, India ended up, scientists tell us, with the world's most mixed population. The demand for partition was linked to India's diversity. To welcome that partition is to imply that people with different backgrounds and different bloodlines cannot live together in one nation, a regressive suggestion. The corollary, that those possessing a common religion or common race enjoy blissful companionship in their homes, nations, or regions is, well, hilarious. I'm curious about possible arguments for opposing this motion. Perhaps it will be said, we do not regret the partition, we denounce it. Perhaps it will be said, we will atone for it. It may also be urged that small is manageable. Pre-47 India, it may be said, was too large. Look how easy it is to manage Pakistan today. And what a lark it is to govern today's India. In that case, why stop with Radcliffe's lines? Why not continue the process until we have 100 nations on the subcontinent, each still larger than many a European country? It may also be argued that majorities tyrannize. But the 1947 partition did not reduce the majority's power to oppress. In both halves that resulted, Majorities became preponderant majorities. In some places, they became cruel majorities. Muslim majorities got Pakistan, but they did not need it. Muslim minorities in India who needed security became more insecure. Perhaps it will be claimed that there would have been no independence without partition, that partition was merely the other side of the shiny coin of independence. However, there were doors other than partition to reach independence. The coin of independence could have had on its reverse, instead of partition, the insignia of statesmanship, of honorable compromise. I regret more than partition. I deeply regret the fact that the people and the leaders of the India prior to 1947, and the people and leaders of the UK at that time, could not retain unity while ushering in liberty. I regret the failure in ingenuity, the failure in statesmanship. I do not regret independence, whether of Pakistan or of India, or of Bangladesh. Partition, on the other hand, caused pain and continues to cause pain. There was another argument for partition 70 plus years ago. 
In a Muslim majority Pakistan, it was said, freed of the weight of idol-worshipping Hindus, we will create an ideal Islamic society, a pure society of justice and brotherhood. Sisterhood was not mentioned. In reality, this pure Islamic society was not an argument, it was a fantasy. Uh, sorry. It was a fantasy. Daydreams were turned into slogans, and slogans were sold to gullible millions. The world knows that there, are, that there are many Islams. To ask for an Islamic state, even in an overwhelmingly Muslim nation, is to invite fears and continual clash. I will concede that there was a noble impulse behind the partition demand, the impulse of human freedom. Why should people be forced to live together? Why should one set of people dominate over another? If, an, if incompatibility is proved and oppression is established, common sense might call for separation, an amicable one if feasible. But what would you say about a separation that places vulnerable children under the permanent rule of a cruel man who's not their father or of a cruel woman who's not their mother? This, in effect, is what partition did in both halves. Who celebrates partition? Those on the subcontinent who find that suppressing minorities is easier because of partition. Champions of a purely Hindu India separate, celebrate partition. Champions of a purely Muslim Pakistan celebrate partition. Those with a seemingly unquestionable thirst to put minorities in their proper place of servitude, such interests have rejoiced over partition. And who perhaps, and also perhaps those beyond the subcontinent, including die-hard imperialists here in this beautiful land, who did not want a united subcontinent to play a prominent part in the peace and prosperity of the world. I concede that among those in India who opposed the partition and who now claim to regret it are many who wanted lands but not the people. They wanted a single India but not an India of equal rights. They wanted domination of minorities under a harsh unitary state. Yes, there were people like that. A South Indian poet, a Telugu poet, Madam President, has captured the difference between a nation as a physical tract and a nation as a people, said Gurujad Aparao. Never does land mean clay and sand. The people, the people, they are the land. If tyranny had ended with partition, I would have welcomed division. In fact, however, tyranny was multiplied by partition. Are we proposing a partition of Nigeria, of Ghana, of Kenya, of every country in the world with a significant religious minority? And why only a religious minority? What about racial, tribal, or linguistic minorities? To oppose the motion is to be pessimistic. It is to be regressive. To partition the Tower of Babel is to begin to demolish it. Evolution moves towards understanding, towards tolerance, towards acceptance and mixture, not towards apartheid or hostility. Partition, meanwhile, has led to the possibility, the specter we all know, of nuclear war. No, madam, we do not regret independence. We deeply regret the fact that the people and the leaders of India at that time, and the people and leaders of the UK at that time, could not retain unity while ushering in liberty. We regret the failure in ingenuity and statesmanship. We do not regret independence. We regret partition. We do not seek to undo it. We lament, but we also learn. We see the greatness that might have been. And for a moment, we feel deeply sad, but it is the future that holds our attention. And for that future, we are resolved to know and befriend our neighbor, our neighbors, if possible, to reach an agreement of partnership for the future. We know that the finest defense for a nation is the friendship of its neighbor. Despite many weaknesses, Madam President, India may have a message for the world. It is the message of friendship, of forgiveness, of reconciliation, of understanding. The message was and is spelt out by the famous and the unknown, by the Buddha, by Ashoka, by Akbar, by several sons and daughters of this land, the UK who contributed to Indian unity. I spoke about 
Britain's role in the division of India, but I want today to acknowledge the role of many people from this country, from England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, who went to the subcontinent and worked for Indian unity. By Gandhi, by Nehru, by Patel, by Maulana Azad, Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan. I'm sure this house will want, on the streets of planet Earth, Hindus, Muslims, Christians, Sikhs and Buddhists walking side by side for peace. Once upon a time, the tribe was our world. Today the planet is our village. Oxford has cultivated over its long history and wonderful history the seeds of dialogue and reconciliation. This house will want to learn from and to regret the partition of India. Thank you.